Welcome to worship this morning. So glad you can be with us. This is our last Sunday before we reopen for worship, uh, and I should say God willing, <laughs> but we're hoping on Tuesday there's going to be an announcement from the state of California that everything can open up again, and we're just waiting for details. So we don't know the details of what it's going to be like when you come to worship next Sunday, but right now it looks like it's a go for meeting together, and I'm going to share more about that during announcements but right now, as we gather in our homes or wherever you're gathered today, it's my prayer that we would worship the Lord together. And I, I just want to say I appreciate our congregation so much and friends of our church for just hanging in there and gathering uh, every Sunday around your computer or around your TV set. Uh, God has been good to us and has brought us through and will continue to bring us through because now we're transitioning to a new way of doing things and we, uh, we're waiting to see what God has for us. But we know we can trust him, and that goes right with the word for today, which is serenity, serenity. So that's our, our word I'll be talking about. And let's come to the Lord now and worship him in spirit and in truth wherever we may be. Let's worship the Lord.
that my Redeemer lives And now I stand on what he did My Savior, my Savior lives Every day's a brand new chance to say Jesus, you are the only way My Savior, my Savior lives I know that my Redeemer lives Now I stand on what He did My Savior, my Savior lives Every day a brand new chance to say Jesus, you are the only way today. Jesus, thank you that you live today. See you. 
is mine. Come into the garden and take delight in me. Oh, take delight in me. Oh, delight in me. Delight in me. Delight in me. Delight. Oh, delight in me. Delight in me. Oh, delight in me. Delight. Here in your presence, God. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for your very presence that's over this sanctuary right now. Holy Spirit, we do invite you to have your way in this place today. Father, we're so very grateful for your faithfulness over this past 14 months as we've walked through this pandemic with you. God, you are good and you are great and we exalt your name today. So, Lord God, would you be a part of everything that happens in this place today? We commit it all to you, to your praise, to your honor, and to your glory. In Christ's name, amen. Oh, so glad to have everybody here with us today. Uh, this is on our last uh, just pure Facebook Live. Next week, we're going to be starting uh, to meet a sort of hybrid. We're going to have some on Facebook and some, and hopefully a lot of people here. But actually, while we're on Facebook today, this is a great time to invite your friends. Just click that share button, and you can invite everybody on your Facebook list, and they'll get a link, and you, they can come worship with us today. So next Sunday, we're planning to have the sanctuary open for worship. We're also going to have Facebook Live going on, like I just said. So uh, we want to make room for those who feel a safe gathering and those who are not sure if they can gather, but also those who are traveling or away or uh, have illness or can't come to church for another reason. So we're so glad to be able to do that and thank everybody for being so patient uh, through this last 14 months or so as we've tried to figure out how to do this and we're going to be figuring out how to be together again. So so excited about that. It's also Father's Day and I encourage you right now if you are going to be attending in person uh, think about who you might be inviting and bringing to worship with you next Sunday. Refresh update. There is still stuff to be done. Uh, we've been repainting and re actually remodeling some things. And if you have some time this week to help out, uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. And because there's a lot of jobs to be done, we have to still treat the carpet with the uh, protection, the fabric protection. Uh, we have molding to put up in the sanctuary. We have painting to do and other odds and ends. So if you have an hour or two this week, uh, give me a call or shoot me an email, and I'm sure we'll find something for you to do. Our last Zoom coffee fellowship is going to be today, so you want to check in and say hi to everybody. Uh, next week we will have a real coffee hour, thanks to Twyla and Julie, so appreciate that. And Zumba's coming back uh, this Tuesday. Contact Jenny Yates to find out more, and it'll be right here in the sanctuary. Kathy Belden, as always, is available for your script orders. And for the time being, we're still taking offerings um, online or through your bank or mail to the church office, still trying to figure out what we're going to do with offerings on Sunday morning, live, in person here. And we'll find out June 20th what's going on with that. So we're glad you're here, and let's continue to worship the Lord by singing our next praise song together. Perfect one. Matchless King, O oh, beautiful Son, creation sings.
to you Who is like our God Who can compare to you
Well, good morning, Hope Community Church. It's so good to be here with you and also be here with the, the worship team here as well. we're worshiping in person here. Again, it's uh, just wonderful to be here in person to see our beautiful new carpet and the new paint that's going on in the lobby and uh, just to be able to stand and sing and, and just join the, uh, the music here. And I know you will as well, uh, those who can attend in person next week. So I'm um, just so good to be here again. And just uh, c pray for our opening next week and for each of us, whatever is going on in our minds. I know it's just a real difficult time now again, still uh, continues to be and will be probably for a while longer as um, the varying reports around COVID cases around the world and the variants and everything. Just look to God as your guidance and uh, to each other and provide comfort for each other as well and sensitivity as we go through, again, another significant transition for ourselves personally and also in our communities and our church. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you for our worship time here together this morning. Thank you that we can be in your presence and that you are with each one of us. Lord, you see the request for prayers and concerns and for thankfulness in the comments. Lord, we have many concerns for health and loss we pray for all who are healing from all types of illness. We pray for healing, if that is your will, and comfort and strength for the th sick and for their friends and families. Lord, we pray for Dave's friend, Dave Goodall, who was placed on hospice care this last week after a long battle with cancer. Larry is a prayer warrior, missionary, and veteran. Lord, we ask for your mercy and grace over his family his wife, Jean, and his son, Lucas. Lord, we pray for Bonnie Coleman, who is having surgery tomorrow. Please provide wisdom for the doctors and com comfort to Bonnie and her family as she goes through this procedure. Lord, we pray, pray for Lynn Zimmerman, who's having a difficult time recovering from a surgery from several weeks ago. Also, Another friend of uh, Yvonne in our Earls in uh, Oregon is Nancy, who has a cracked bone in her foot. So please pray for quick healing and comfort in both of those situations. Also, we pray for Yvonne's daughter, Amy, who broke her leg just yesterday, Lord, in two places. So please pray for quick, um, we pray for quick healing her situation as well. Lord, we want to thank you for our worship team and their many talents and skills and dedication in leading our church worships each Sunday morning. Lord, we are so thankful and hopeful for the COVID vaccine. We pray that even more people will get vaccinated. We are thankful for the areas in which the numbers of COVID cases are lower. We are also concerned for the areas where the numbers continue to be high. As restrictions are lifted and more areas are opened, we ask for our leaders of all kinds of our government, business, and all types of organizations as they continue to make important decisions about safe ways for us to be together. Please be with our church as we plan for our sanctuary to be open for in person next week. Lord, let us look to you for the peace that you offer, the peace that passes all understanding, knowing that you are in control, even when it doesn't feel like it to us even when we don't like what's happening and maybe wish that you had a different plan. But we can lean on you and know that you are always loving and with us no matter what. We ask all these things or for something even better in your son's name. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Have a wonderful week.
Thanks, Carol. And uh, wow, it is so good. And I said this last time when Carol was here and when Bev was here, it's just so good to have one extra person <laughs> worshiping with us. And uh, so looking forward to next Sunday. You know, this Sunday is a special Sunday, in, or special day in, in my family. We have a lot going on. I just want to give a shout out to my wife, Shannon. It's our anniversary today, and very happy to celebrate that. Yeah. But it's interesting, the same day is the birthday of my son, Micah, and the birthday of his son, my grandson, Jediah, Jedi. So it's a big day in the Norman family. And, uh, and, the, and the word today is serenity. And I just want to let you know that uh, this morning has been anything but serene. <laughs> and I, I think I can relax now. It's all kind of coming, coming together and... We've been making so many different changes to the way we do things technically here, and I appreciate everybody's patience last week. I know we had a lot of distortion in the sound, and I hope that's gone uh, this week. And I uh, want to appreciate the band. They were here for a long time yesterday working out sound issues. So I think we're ready to go pretty much as far as technology for next Sunday. It's just some more of the fixing up that has to be done. So looking forward to it. But today, uh, we are here, and uh, we're going to be at peace, and the word is serenity. And you, know, you might not remember this, but back last, uh, before everything shut down last March, uh, just about six weeks before things shut down, I was doing a sermon series on the serenity prayer. <laughs> you know, I guess the Lord knew what was coming, Right? You know, the Lord knew the pandemic, uh, the election and all the political craziness, the racial strife and unrest and issues, the fires, the storms, and there were even earthquakes. You know, the Lord knew. The Lord knew that we needed to be grounded in the gift and the art of finding His peace in the midst of the storm, because we have been in a storm. I'm going to share some of Psalm 46, and I want to start at verse 10, and this is, what, this is a great psalm for the times we're living in, and we looked at this psalm just before the pandemic started. Psalm 46, starting at verse 10, cease striving. Other translations are be still, relax, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. That word selah, uh, no one's exactly sure what it means, but what the theory is, and I think it's right on target, uh, since the Psalms are music, uh, selah means rest, pause, take a moment, reflect. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, great verses. We need to settle down and we need to settle in. All right? We need to know that the Lord is God and that God is with us. God is our stronghold. And I want to back up to the first verses of this psalm because it sets the scene. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Catch this next verse. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, and though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. So, all right, the earth didn't literally dissolve <laughs> over the last 14 months, but uh, I think it felt like everything we trusted in and thought to be firm and strong was crumbling. I mean, you know what, schools closed, sanctuaries, including ours, were closed. Uh, you, you were afraid that you were taking your life in your hands just to go grocery shopping or go to pump gas. I mean, I remember uh, in the earlier times of this when we weren't sure about things, I would go to the gas pump and I had rubber gloves on, I had a face mask on, and then I would disinfect myself in the car, and again, when I got home, our, our groceries, we'd take them into the garage first and spray them down before bringing them into the house. You know, crazy. Some of us couldn't go to work, had to work from home, or maybe work wasn't even happening, and there's been so much confusing, contradictory information from every side, and that hasn't stopped. <laughs> and 
just before all of this hit, God took us through a series on serenity, and we learned this prayer together, which I want to ask you to pray with me. Uh, it's, it'll be on the screen, but maybe you know it by heart. Let's pray. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. So, you know, we're not totally out of the storm yet. We are transitioning out, and who knows exactly what that's going to look like. But just as we need the gift of serenity and God's peace in the midst of the storm, we need the gift of serenity as we transition out of the storm. And I'm going to share three ways that we can find and live into this serenity prayer and to uh, learn and live into the gift of serenity. And I, I, we're going to focus on this, and I think it's important for this Sunday before we reopen the doors of our sanctuary again that we talk about serenity. So the first key to finding serenity, to living into serenity, comes near the, the, kind of near the end of the prayer, about the two-thirds of the way in. It's the line, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Now, I know I've shared before about the biblical word peace, uh, shalom, is from the Old Testament. It's, and, but I think it's, I need to repeat about the meaning of it because it's so different than the way we think of as peace. Peace, shalom, serenity in the Bible is talking about right relationship. It's, it's not necessarily the absence of pain or the absence of conflict or the absence of hardship. It could be any one of those things, but its, it's main emphasis, its core meaning of peace, of shalom, is right relationship with God and others and self, even in the midst of of the storm. Now, shalom can also mean wholeness and wellness and fulfillment, but the emphasis is on personal relationships more than on things or riches or things going your way. Now, Jesus talked about this. Jesus said, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I give to you. It's a different kind of peace, and I think this is a big hang-up for many of us who live in North America. You know, us North Americans, um, we've got this idea of peace that I think impacts our spiritual growth negatively. Uh, you know, we believe that for peace and serenity to really be present, well, everything's got to go my way, right? Then I'll be at peace. When there's no waves, when there's no lack, when there's no conflict, when there's no sacrifice, then I'll be at peace. Isn't that the way we think about peace? You can usually throw in winning the lotto too, right? That would help. Or somebody gives you a big inheritance, of course, you know. I want you to hear what a Ugandan pastor said about this at a leadership conference. This was a, a few years ago. A bunch of American pastors went over to train a group of East African pastors in theology. And this one pastor, who's actually the, the Bishop of Kampala, he, he said yes, it was, he was grateful for the conference. He really appreciated the education and the leadership from the American pastors. But then he said, in front of the whole group, but there are things the church in the majority world can teach the church in the West. And they said, well, what could that possibly be? And the Ugandan pastor said, like having joy in the midst of suffering. And you know, Pastor Simon, our friend from Kenya, and which just neighbors Uganda, 
he, I think he would tell us the same thing. And, you know, actually, if you've spent any time with Pastor Simon in so many words, and at so many times he kind of laughs at things that we do and say, he's saying to us, we need to learn from the majority world church that we can have joy and serenity in the midst of suffering. We need to let go of our fantasy of perfection when it comes to serenity. Because serenity, when we need it, is when we are in the midst of the storm. And I would even say that it's many times in the midst of the storm, in the struggle, in the hardship itself, that we actually find the path to serenity. It's when we're, when we're in the middle of it, not when it's over. You know, founding father John Adams said, I love this quote, and I shared this last time I talked on this, but it's so powerful. Um, he says, grief drives men and women into habits of serious reflection, sharpens the understanding, and softens the heart. Isn't that true? We can learn the way of peace as we navigate through hardship. But I have to say the opposite is true, too. Many times we choose not to find the way of peace in hardship. Many times when we're in hardship and suffering, we choose the way of bitterness and anger and resentment. And going through the hardship, if we go through that way, it makes our hearts harder. And I will say it makes our lives harder. So the first key of finding and living into serenity is to accept that hardship is the pathway to peace. Hardship is not the dead end. Hardship is not the defeat, but it is a pathway to peace. The second key comes as the next line in the prayer. Taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Well, we'd, we'd all love to change the world, wouldn't we? According to our plan, according to our desire. And I just want to let you know, you'll be waiting for a long, long time for that to happen. If that's what is going to happen, if that's what you need for serenity and peace, uh, people are always going to disappoint you. Uh, things are never going to go according to your plan. Uh, there's a chart that I've shared before and actually posted on Facebook a number of times because it's so true. Uh, this is by someone named Julia. This is about how it works. You see the first part of the chart? Straight line, what I planned. And then there's what actually happened. It's all over, the, all over the place. You know, how many things did you try to schedule last year that never happened? You know, when all of this started, we thought it'd be over in a few weeks, tops, didn't we? I mean, uh, the band I'm in uh, with Ron, Johnny and the Wildcats, we had about four gigs uh, scheduled, and we'd call up the places and go, are you going to be open? Are you going to be open? No, we're not going to be open. You know, oh, well, maybe the, the later ones would be open, but no, everyone was canceled. And, uh, you know, as much relief as we've had in this past few weeks, and even though we're going to be back worshiping God willing next week, it isn't over yet. It isn't over yet. But I will tell you, we are still here, and Jesus is still Lord even though this world is far from the world you would like and I would like, God is good. Somebody posted that I saw earlier. God is good all the time. God is good. You know, the Bible says that God loved us while we were yet sinners. God loved us even though we were still far and still are far from perfect. You know, think about it. God could have stood up on a cloud and just shouted down to us and said, uh, see you all when you get your act together if you don't kill each other first. <laughs> but God didn't do that, didn't he? Did he? He, he loved the world, not because we're perfect, not because we had our acts together, not because we deserved his love, but God is love. God so loved each and every one of us that he came to us just as we are. We didn't have to get good enough for him to come. He, he came, and he loved us. Loved us enough just as we are. Also loved us enough not to leave us that way. And then when it meant giving his life, you know, you think about Jesus, 
the night before he went to the cross, he prayed a very vulnerable, very honest prayer. Jesus prayed and said, Father, if there's another way, if it's possible, take this cup from me. And when the answer was, uh, no, this is the way, Jesus took this sinful world as it is, not as he would have it, trusting that God would make all things right if he surrendered to God's will. And so he stretched out his arms and he said, there's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends and he gave his life for us so that we could become more like him. We love him because he first loved us. And I think when it comes to serenity, are we willing to love like Jesus? Are we willing to love first when things are not to our liking? Are we willing to love when people don't live up to our standards? You know, God welcomes us and loves us just as we are. He knows how messed up we are. He's not surprised. And I'll let you know, God even loves and welcomes those people who live next door to you, your neighbors. He's not shocked. He's not surprised that they're just as messed up as you are. God knows we love in a bro- live in a broken world. And God knows that we do not participate in his saving work by complaining and moaning and wanting everything to be up to our standards. We participate with God in the saving of this world by loving others just like Jesus loves us. To love others as he loves us, that's God's will for us. And loving others as he loves us takes some surrendering on our part. So the first key is we accept hardship as a pathway to peace. The second is we take, as he did, the sinful world as it is, not as we would have it. And the third key to serenity is that we trust that God will make all things right if we surrender to his will. So this is Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 25. And you won't uh, hear the word serenity in this passage, but it's all about serenity. Hear the word of the Lord. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? Why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory was clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the, clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow and thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek Ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's the word of the Lord. Verse 27, and who of you by being worried can add a single hour to his life? Did any of you worry and fret? about not being able to get back to worship any faster than we're getting back? Did that help us get there faster? You know, the only place that worry and fret is going to get you is to an earlier grave. You know, it's, it's, it, it, but it's not that we're never going to worry. We're, we're human beings. We're going to worry. We're going to be afraid. We're going to be concerned. We are. That's, that's part of being a human being. But Jesus tells us that there is a place to take that worry. There is a place to take that concern. There is a place to take that fear.
fear. We don't have to be stuck there. We don't have to live there. We take it to the Lord. I should be saying there's a person to take it to. We take it to the Lord, and we surrender. We surrender it to God. And that's the key, I think, in all of this, in the whole serenity prayer, is the idea of surrender. You know, surrender is the key when it comes to accepting what we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It all comes down to surrender, doesn't it? We surrender and accept. We surrender and we change. We surrender our own ideas about how the world should be and the way things should be set up, and we submit and surrender to God's wisdom, which you haven't found out by now. Father does know best, and he knows better than each and every one of us. Surrender to his wisdom wisdom. You know, every one of the words we've looked at, we've got a few more to look at before we're done with this series, but every one of them has to do with acceptance, it has to do with change, and it has to do with growing in God's wisdom. And serenity, like all these words, serenity comes when we learn to accept, accept God's in control, and we're not Accept that we can really trust him to make things right. Just as he cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, he does really care for us. You know, I was talking with our church elders about this the other day, and uh, somebody mentioned that one of the greatest gifts we can give to another person is our own sense of peace and security and trust in God. You know, just think about that when you're sharing your faith, or even when you're just not sharing with words, just living life with your brothers and sisters and with your neighbors and your friends and people at work, one of the great gifts you can give them is your own sense of peace and serenity and trust of God in the midst of the storm. And I'll tell you, that wins more people into having an interest in God than anything else. I, I, you know, it's, it's great to have your theology down, It's great to have your biblical knowledge. It's great to have your arguments as to why there is a God and why we should believe in God. There's a place for all of that. There's a time for all of that. But I'd say nine times out of ten, I think it's our peace and our calmness in the midst of the storm that intrigues people and interests people in finding out more about what is this God thing that you're into? What is that all about? serenity. I see peace in your life, and I'd like that peace, too. So it's my prayer that God would grant you serenity. Let's pray. God, I ask that you'd grant us all your serenity, that you would be our refuge and our strength, that you would be an ever-present help in trouble because you are. I pray that we would not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake in their surging. Lord, help us to cease striving, to be still, to relax, and know that you are God. You will be exalted among the nations. You will be exalted in the earth. Lord, you are the Lord of hosts and you are with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. Amen. All right, let's prepare our hearts for the closing.
to give up. the blessing. Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise. You are good. You are God. And you are always with us. And you are a firm foundation on which we can stand no matter what happens around us. And so we do take a stand, Lord. We stand on you, the solid rock of salvation. And I pray, Lord, that as we leave this time together, we would not leave you. You are always with us. You go before us and behind us, alongside us. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and your goodness. And I pray that we would all know the love of God. We would all know the grace and forgiveness that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. And we would know the power and the peace and the serenity of the Holy Spirit, which passes all understanding. And may the power and peace and spirit, the love of God and the grace of God be with us all. In Jesus' name. Amen.